Um, I'm going to move really quick. You guys can be seated real quick. Um, I just want to kind of share with you what the Lord was, as I was reading through here, oh, he was just downloading so much to me. And I tried to put it down on paper, but here we go. I heard the Lord say in my spirit, you are only a stone's throw away from victory. This is for somebody, right? Only a stone's throw away from victory. Remember David, just before he met Goliath, it started out as a day like no other. Every other, every other day, I mean, it was like just a regular day. Yet that day was going to be different from him than all the others. Right. Up until that point, nothing had changed in David's life except he had received an anointing from God to be king. But it was not recognized at that point. Right. He had nothing else going for him. He was he wasn't big. He wasn't well known or even the favorite of his family. He was just a shepherd. Um, not very much was actually expected of him. David was ordinary and common by man's standards. The anointing to be king hadn't changed his situation, except it did seem to put a target on his back with his brothers who were obviously jealous. Right. And while man chose him to watch the sheep and carry the food to his brothers, God chose him to be a deliverer. And so it happened on that very ordinary day that the anointing of God met him where he was at. The anointing of God met with the arrogance of man. Number six, remember, he was six cubits tall. And only one man was standing when it was all over. Father God is saying to you, whoever this is for, you feel hidden and forgotten. Like you have nothing going for you. But he says to you, accept me. You have a lot going for you. All you need is me. You don't need someone else's armor. You don't need someone else's anointing. All you need is me. I have chosen you for a purpose. And my purpose and my will is going to turn heads and leave jaws dropping. My child, you are only a stone's throw away from your life changing forever. You are one decision away from everything turning around. I also heard this. A fire like no other has seemed to come against you. But you remain steadfast. In your love and your trust for the Father. And all the while he has watched over you and he's fought for you. And he wants you to know this. Through the fire. And though it has been intense. The presence of God has been pervasive. Invasive and breathtaking. Sometimes he wants you to know that he's been the one that has carried you through himself. And he wants you to know you're nearly there. Just one push and your enemy's oppression is about to give way to the new you that has been hidden under the ashes of the enemy's assault. He will stand. You will stand victorious in complete submission to your heavenly father. And more power than any earthly force could ever reckon with. Listen, the fire has not destroyed you. No. The enemy's attack against you has only emboldened you. They've turned your ashes into iron.
No one else could have turned what the enemy meant for your destruction into the construction of the king that God was creating. No one can do for you quite like God is doing for you right now. Even when you thought it was silent, even when you thought he wasn't close, when you thought he isn't near, you thought God has forgotten you. He says, I have been with you the whole time. And the calling on your life has made you a target. Indeed, the enemy is intensely jealous of the love that the father has for you. He hates you for having what he can never have. Yet in the darkness of the night, you've endured the enemy's hatred. And now the sunrise on your trial has begun to dawn. Awaken now, you realize that all along, it was only the pruning of the Lord. That you've endured all that the enemy has thrown at you. And everything that he's thrown at, at you has only worked to make you an intense, glory-filled warrior for the Most High God. You went to sleep a child on the hillside. Tending the sheep, but you woke up a mighty, fearless warrior experienced in victory. God has proven once again that he is the superior power and that the darkness, that darkness is dispelled by the greatness of his light and his love. Goliath has fallen. And you are the one with the sling in your hand. You thought that you were only a child simply trusting the father who loves you. And yet you see this vile, once seething giant laying headless at your feet. Everyone's looking at you with their eyes wide and their jaws dropped, not expecting much from you. They had no idea you had it in you. But they weren't there when you killed the lion and the bear. They were not there when your heavenly father told you that you were chosen and loved by him. They were not there when he poured his power into you and called you ruler of nations. Trust God. Because it is in the darkest moments that true faith is formed. The word of God tells us our faith will be tested. So don't be surprised when it's tested. A faith that is built on a loving relationship of trust is unstoppable. When being in God's will matters more to you than getting everything your way, that's when you know you're in true relationship with him. That's where you've learned to rest and stay seated at the table that he's provided for you. When you tried everything you know to do, and have nothing to hope in except the realization that your heavenly father loves you. Then you've discovered the key to everlasting joy. God's given somebody joy here tonight. In the midst of all this junk that's going on in your life. When you love him. And your love for him matters more than your safety. That makes you unstoppable. We talked about that Sunday. I love this. You may have been thrown into the fire alone, but you walk out. <laughs> Not on your own. The furnace of afflictions will turn your ashes into a rod of iron. A weapon of mass destruction to the enemy's kingdom. Listen, Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they refused to bow down to his false god. But their trust in God and love for him, that made it impossible for them to even consider trying to save their own life and risking offending God. 
God's love is unfailing. And when you are loved like that, it matters more than your safety or your comfort. If we would just trust him, he would drive back our enemies, break through the chains of despair and make a wild display of his love for us in the presence of our enemies. The enemy rises up, raises up people who are willing to hate you, using them as weapons to try and break you. Yet God says no. God said no. That's for somebody here. God said no. He turns the enemy's weapons into an audience. All the people that gather to watch you hang. Listen, he turns them into an audience and puts them on and puts a show on of his love for you. He makes them watch while he prepares a table before you in their presence. Psalm 23 and five. Stay seated at the table. Don't get up. It's not that the enemy can't see you at the table, but there are two seats at that table. It says he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. So God is the other person at the table. He's seated with you. You're seated with him, right? But the enemy wants to taunt you. Because he definitely can see you. He didn't say he, you were out of view of the enemy. He said you're out of reach of the enemy. The enemy has to sit and watch you eat at God's table. The only way the enemy gets to sit down in your place is if you get up. And he'll try to trick you to get up out of the rest that God has placed in your life. He's going to try to trick you to get up. Because he knows if he can get you standing up, you won't be eating the bread of life that you need for sustenance in your life. He knows that when you don't eat the bread, you get weak. You see the importance of staying seated at the table. Right? Don't trade your place. Stay seated at the table. As the father displays his love for you and makes them watch. For it is their attacks against you that have made you the fearless warrior that you've become. It is indeed the fire of their harassment that the father has used to prepare you for the intense blessing he's been waiting to bestow upon you. Now, how many of you remember the word a couple of weeks ago? Are you prepared for what God has been preparing for you? Only a good father understands the pressures you will face as you walk in what's ahead for you. Indeed, would it be a father's love to allow you to proceed to the calling and purpose of waiting without properly preparing you for it? Oh, he's been preparing you. He loves you and he doesn't want to see you crushed by the pressure of the blessing that he's bringing to your life. His grace and his love. Are sufficient for you. You are victorious. Yes. Yes. Come on. Yes. Just some things that I felt like God was saying. As I was reading that. I know it's kind of scattered. But that's where. As I was reading like. Felt like in my spirit. And I know it just wasn't for me. Right. So you need to understand your position. Who God is calling you. What he's calling you to. He's calling you to victory. He's calling you victorious. He's calling you to stay seated at the table. To work from a place of rest. We're doers by nature. But he's saying, stay seated. I've already done the work. You stay seated. You continue to eat. Continue to get what you need. Because eventually, guess what? When you do get up from the table, you're going to be strengthened enough to go to the battlefield and do what he's called you to do. 
Amen. Stand with me. We're going to be dismissed together. So good. So good. So, Father, we thank you for your word tonight. God, we thank you that you love us so intensely. God, you, you're after us all the time. You're with us all the time. And God, you call us victorious. God, you, you have literally cut the head off the enemy and you call it our victory. And God, we thank you that you are our champion tonight. God, we rejoice in your victory. God, we thank you for it. God, we give you all the glory and the honor. Now, God, I ask as we leave this place, God, we would carry your presence with us. Wherever we would go, we would influence nations because of your presence in our lives. God, we give you the praise and honor and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you back here on Saturday night for prayer 6 to 7. Also on Sunday morning, 9 and 11.